Hey, where are you going? Hmm. Seems the older I get, the harder it is to fall asleep. Hey. We meet again, sleepyhead. What? What's Miss Black Swan doing here? Nothing, Miss March. I noticed she was awake and wanted to check to see how she was doing. Though the strike from the General was timely, its destruction was also immense. When emanators collide, ordinary people inevitably suffer. But, luckily for them, the dreamscape is my home turf. Thankfully, I managed to get everyone out before the harmonious choir collapsed. Oh, so that's what happened! Uh, thank you, Miss Black Swan! Don't mention it. After all, I wouldn't want to see such precious memories vanish. You're heading to see your friends, aren't you? Would it bother you if I walked with you for a short while? Of course not. But you're not planning on doing something like last time, are you? <laughs> Why would you think that? I've never harbored any ill intentions. Well, not when you are around, anyway. Himeko and Mr. Yang are probably still busy. Let's go look for Don Hung first! You're awake. How do you feel? Well, fork me. You must be that Stellaron they were talking about. I didn't mention anything to him. Partner, you got it all wrong. I heard it straight from the memo keeper. Allow me to introduce him to you. This is Boot Hill, a galaxy ranger. During our pursuit of a certain person, we crossed paths and just so happened to uncover a shocking plot being concocted by Mr. Sunday. <sighs> Which is why we sought you out to help the Astral Express save the world together. No need for thanks. The Galaxy Ranger's principle is correct every injustice one sees. That's how you lot in the Sien Show put it, right, Don Hoon? Uh, more or less. Wait, hold on a sec. This is the first time I'm hearing about this certain person. Who are you chasing? And why would that lead you to the Express? <laughs> uh, good question. <laughs> it's, uh... Um... <clears throat> Who was it again? Uh, Don Hung, do you remember? No, that ain't it. I just can't seem to recall. <sighs> Weird. A neurochip hasn't registered any malfunctions. It... Hmm. I can't seem to remember either. Uh, what's going on? <sighs> Vic, forget about it. If it slipped all our minds, reckon that person was just a minor scoundrel. Unimportant. Ain't gonna stop us from piecing together the story anyhow. Yes. When the dust settles, I'll just think of a way to recall it in the memory zone. Everyone, let's hurry up and look for Miss Himigo, shall we? 
She's now a minor star on Panacone, and the entire hotel's concerned about her well-being. You're right. Let's head to the lobby then. You guys go. I'm an outsider, after all. I'd rather not disrupt the long-awaited reunion. Hey, let me tell you. That's all right. In these times of conflict for the sake of utmost safety, it is only right that the Alliance steps forward to mediate on behalf of the Astral Express. We must not allow you to take unnecessary risks. Furthermore, despite the IPC's eagerness for success, it prioritizes peace above all, and the family, trapped though it may be, professes a desire for harmony. The Alliance has always won people over with reason. I firmly believe both parties can indeed put aside their differences and come to a peaceful agreement. The General possesses a deep understanding of the greater good. With the Sienjo Alliance mediating, peace for Penacone is within reach. <laughs> you flatter me. But ultimately, it's been all down to the Express. Without your efforts, this sweet dream paradise would have been claimed by the last remnants of order before there was even a shot at peace. Well, would you look at that. Here comes the big hero. <laughs> if it isn't the galactic baseballer, a hero with unparalleled insight. Are you okay? I heard you couldn't wake up. Are you feeling unwell? Uh, don't worry, Mr. Yang. There's nothing wrong with her. She practically burned through a lifetime's worth of jokes on the way here. What about you, Mr. Yang? I heard that even Miss Robin wasn't spared. And that guy locked you both up. Uh, it's a long story. But at least Mr. Sunday took it easy on us. He used an ability called tuning to connect our consciousnesses with his. In other words, he imprisoned us within his consciousness. Thanks to General Jingyuan's destruction of the Harmonious Choir, we were able to escape. Uh, he used that tuning on us too! Does that mean that we were almost imprisoned as well? I can confidently say now, he was truly after a fair fight with us. Had he wanted, he could have easily taken us down, without so much as lifting a finger. Speaking of the Oak family head, where is he now? It's complicated, but in a nutshell, he's now the former Oak family head. The IPC has named him the key figure in the family's Pentacony split citing a threat to cosmic peace. He must represent the family and answer for the unrest caused. His trial is set to take place at Pier Point. The family quickly labeled him and the remnants of the Order as enemies, declaring the turmoil an internal rebellion. This move effectively barred the IPC from intervening in family affairs on both moral and rational grounds. Everyone really has their own agenda, after all. Then, what's going to happen to Miss Robin? She and Sunday won't be able to deny their involvement in the Charmony Festival. They're siblings, after all. <sighs> Why the sigh, General? 
I can only say that this incident is an unexpected mess for the girl. The Alliance will try to persuade the family to consider this matter carefully during mediation. It's time, everyone. The IPC's key members and I have agreed to consult one another before the upcoming negotiation. Do any of you wish to sit in? Given the General's invitation and the matter's significance to the universe, the crew will naturally accept. However, if the IPC has any reservations... Why, of course you're welcome. They've mentioned that your team is a trusted ally of the IPC and Pentacoin, so there's no reason not to welcome you. Besides, if there can be reliable observers from the Astral Express present, discussions will go more smoothly. So, what do you all think? <laughs> well then, we shall oblige. I'm kind of allergic to those types of situations. I think I'll just head back to my room and start packing. <laughs> Not to worry. Himako and I won't take care of things. I'm afraid I'll also have to return to the Express first. The conductor is worried about us. It's best I go and explain the situation. Thank you. What about you, hmm? Will you join Welt and me? Or have you got other plans? <laughs> Good guess. Although I'm not too sure of the reason, the representatives from the IPC have insisted on her presence. Allow me to lead the way. Follow me, please. The negotiation will commence at the hotel lobby. Everyone, please follow me. Mr. Aventurine and Miss Topaz are here too. Oh, and who is that over there? The Intelligentsia Guild's Dr. Ratio. This assembly is quite something. It's been a while, my Astral Express friends. I would also extend my sincere thanks to you. General of the Lafu. The presence of everyone here assures that the talks will likely reach a conclusion that satisfies all sides. Oh. Looks like everyone has come with expectations. Care to share? Of course. Topaz, if you please. Sure. Leave it to me. In summary, that's good news. After much deliberation from the Strategic Investment Department's Council, the absolute majority of members have agreed to the following resolutions. In light of long-term considerations for interastral peace, and by authority of Pierpoint HQ, the Strategic Investment Department, on behalf of the Interastral Peace Corporation, will permanently relinquish its claim on Penacony sovereignty and offer unconditional support of the family's rebuilding efforts on Penacony. Ah. Uh. <laughs> now that's something. <laughs> well, if that's what it takes to bring peace to the entire universe, it's a price I'll gladly pay. Has the IPC finished sharing all its thoughts? Then it's our turn. The Guild, much like the Genius Society, has taken a keen interest in the recent calamity in Penacony. Ultimately, both parties have agreed to a comprehensive collaboration offering technical support for the reconstruction of Penacony. The floor is yours for the finer points, Mr. Scrullum. Enlighten us, please. Organic life's unrelenting search to understand the realm of inner spirituality is something I both admire and envy. Inorganic life has no mechanism to evoke dreams. But when my mechanical impulses are activated, my inspiration circuits will start to operate and I will enter a state defined as imagination. 
Every time, within the realm of imagination, there emerges a fire from the shadows. It is warm, bright. I frequently ponder this flame might represent the essence of intelligence. A cluster of inspiration ignited by high temperatures. The future direction of the universe may well lie within it. Alas, they are nothing but projections of my thought system to me. Desired, but unattainable. But after learning of Penacone's accomplishments, I have come to realize that the flame is not beyond my grasp. After deliberations with my partners, we have decided to defer the progress of the Simulated Universe project, and instead assist the Intelligentsia Guild as technological consultants in the research of the Dreamscape and Memory Zone so that these assets may be better used to serve humanity. Not only that, we've also established contact with the Garden of Recollection through the IPC, and they've pledged their support for our research endeavors. I'm truly happy for the Dream Chasers on Penacone. The cosmos' is brightest and, let's admit, dimmer intellects are now at their service. Agreed. It's hard to imagine members of the Genius Society taking an interest in such mundane research. <sighs> Never mind. At the end of the day, this is a positive outcome. <laughs> no wonder everyone insisted that she be there. It heartens me to learn that everyone is willing to put aside their differences for Penacone's plight. I trust that everyone will surely reach consensus in the upcoming negotiations. Looks like Panacone's future is decided. I'm wondering, is there anything else the crew is concerned about? Peace is our greatest wish. Beyond that, we desire nothing else. <laughs> well, that's good. Now that everyone's minds are at ease, I shall take my leave. You may now depart with peace of mind. The Alliance will deal with all subsequent procedures. If that's the case, it appears that we have nothing else to worry about on Penacone. Looks like it's time for us to embark on a new voyage. Sounds good to me. You two head back to the Express first. I'll pick up March and deal with the checkout procedure. Oh, also, Miss Black Swan. You have a matter to discuss with me, yes? Mm -hmm. Nothing escapes your attention, Miss Navigator. You've been with us this whole time, huh? In any case, she and I will be waiting for you and March on the Express. Let's go. Our time on Penacone has come to a fruitful end. Penacone's journey ends here. I guess it was pretty fruitful. This is all due to your heroic deeds in Penacone. Everyone's been moved by your integrity and selflessness. I am truly happy for the Dream Chasers on Penacone. The cosmos is brightest and, let's admit, dimmer intellects are now at their service. Well, seems the dust is finally settled, no? Well done, friend. The navigation meeting is about to start! We're all waiting for you! When did the Express become so lively? This a meeting to decide our next stop? <laughs> How we doing this? By show of hands. Hold your horses, cowboy. 
It's for those to decide. Allow me to explain. Mr. Boothill and Miss Black Swan submitted a request to temporarily travel with the Express for their own personal reasons. As you all may know, the Astral Express never declines any passenger whose heart yearns for the distant stars. Therefore, they will be traveling with us for a while until they reach their destinations. Whoa, the Express is going to be much livelier now! But, Miss Black Swan, you better not use your Memo Keeper abilities to pull any pranks. <laughs> Understood, Miss Marge. I promise you, you'll never see me in your room while you're taking a break. Uh, don't! You're freaking me out! All right, all right, now that everyone's met everyone, we can continue our navigation meeting. Firstly, Pom Pom wishes to thank everyone. If it weren't for you all unearthing the truth about Petaconi, Pom Pom would have never known where Mikhail and the rest had gone. What they had to go through was regrettable, but I reckon they all fulfilled their wishes. And it was thanks to all of you. Thank you, everyone. Now then, we come to the crux of this navigation meeting. We must decide on the Express's next stop. Let me introduce our current options. The first choice is from Himiko, the oceanic planet of Lushaka, a planet composed entirely of water. Many aquatic races reside there. Of course, it's also the home planet of the venerable, nameless Mikhail. The second choice is the agate world Melustanin, suggested by Welt. It's famed as one of the initial sites of the Stellaron disaster, and the place where the beauty Idrilla ascended. Today, it's celebrated as a planet of undying allure. The third choice is Edostar, a planet nestled within a vast ion storm region, currently under assault by the Antimatter Legion. However, the distress signals from there have recently ceased, prompting the IPC's wish for us to check in on the situation. The last choice, courtesy of Black Swan, is the glass belt Petravia, a massive belt of asteroids that was turned to glass by the Lord Ravager Zephyro. These days, it's apparently known to house one of the branches of the Morning Actors Troupe. Ooh, so many options. I'm seeing stars already. Next up, everyone will select the destination that they wish to visit, and then we'll put it to a vote. Though the fact that the distress signals have ceased means we're probably too late. But I still think we should investigate the situation there. Yes, I agree. As Nameless, should we not extend a helping hand? You and Don Hung make good points. I'll throw in a vote for Edo Star too. If that's the general sentiment, then we should indeed investigate. I vote for Edo Star too. All votes for Edo Star. Looks like we have a winner. Next stop, Edo Star. Then this navigation meeting is adjourned. I'll go check the warp jump coordinates. Everyone can catch up on some rest in the meantime. When it's time to make the jump, Pom Pom will make an announcement. There's still some time before the jump. What should I do? <laughs> How about a chat? Over here. Huh. For some reason, I'm suddenly stricken by the feeling that we haven't crossed paths in quite some time. Hmm. Perhaps the joy of reuniting after a long time can also be considered just another part of the trailblaze. <laughs> Got it. These 
let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Mumbling? I'm praying. <sighs> the last couple of trailblazing expeditions have been downright terrifying. It's about time we had some fun, cozy, and cute adventures for a change. Come on, start praying with me. Oh, please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. Please let this trip be uneventful. <laughs> You're fast becoming an excellent trailblazer. It's an honor to be able to watch you grow. Yes, yes, you are. I've known many warriors in my time, and only a few achieve the kind of growth you have. Back home, where I'm from, you'd be rated oh, at least an S-tier. It's not been easy for you these past few days. You've earned some downtime. I'm looking forward to seeing how you'll perform on our next journey. Come to think of it, <laughs> this trip to Panacone was the first time we trailblazed together, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll have plenty of time to spend together on the Express, so there'll definitely be more chances for adventures like this. Turn in early today. You've really been pushing yourself hard recently. If you don't take this chance to recharge, it could lead to long-term problems. It seems fine when you're young, but it's a different story as you age. This Astral Express sure is comfy, but I got one tiny problem with it. How come there ain't no potent drinks on this ride? I can live without malt juice, but at least stock something else. Like that white gem, common as dirt and not too pricey. Oh, well, that's a uh, different kind of strong. <laughs> All these years out in the wild, and now I'm bunking in luxury. Gotta say, it's quite the treat. Oh. You're here, seeing your reflection among the stars in the porthole. <laughs> really does seem somewhat surreal. How about it, this journey of beautiful dreams? Was it to your liking? Ah. Such an intense emotion. Mm -hmm. Makes you break out in a sweat, but you just can't get enough. So, how about you hand that small parting gift back to me? I'm quite eager to have it back. Hmm. Oh? Hmm. Never mind. I just stumbled upon a particularly fascinating spot in your memory. Before I explain, I would like to apologize to you. This farewell gift I gave you isn't really a compass from the memory zone, but merely an empty light cone. Remember when we entered the hotel in the dreamscape for the first time, and I procured a few trinkets from your companions? Their functions are similar. This way, I can always be attuned to your location, ready to assist immediately if you encounter any threats. But this is not its most intrinsic function. 
Light cones are slices of light used to encapsulate solidified phenomena. This empty light cone is the same. It can etch your memories in their most vivid form, and then... Allow me to admire and manipulate them, turning them into unique mementos. All the world is born from the power of mind and soul, and that power is memory. To prevent ourselves from being forgotten by the world, we must make the world remember us. Or use our memories to recreate it. Life, seemingly vast, offers but a scant collection of impactful memories. Some joyful, some sorrowful, some light, some heavy. But you are different. Memory is a reflection of the future. Within that reflection, I see your unparalleled worth. You have the power to craft memories that can captivate the world. Your memory can illuminate the universe's future path. And that memory will be as scintillating as the star clusters you see in this portal. <laughs> the memories I have of you are not enough for me to predict a future that lies too far ahead. But I can tell you one thing. My favor towards you stems from a more profound reason. The reason is simple. In this grandiose and ostentatious dream of the families, only you personally experienced the entire course. <laughs> Patience, my friend. I will reveal the answer to you, but that time is not now. Turn around and take a look at your friends. Every one of them is reveling at the arrival of their next destination, all filled with hopes and expectations of their own present and future. Revealing everything at this moment would be a bit of a buzzkill, wouldn't it? I'm looking for an opportune time, a time when you're totally at ease. Perhaps when the night grows hazy and you're about to drift off would be the most opportune. How about one fine night? I will prepare the candles, aromatics, and even a cushy couch to create a cozy dreamland for you. And then... I will tell you the answer in the form of a little bedtime story to lull you to sleep. Ahem. Hi. Hello. Attention all passengers. The express is about to make the jump. Please be seated and hold on. <laughs> it looks like we're finally about to set off. There are countless gleaming memories out there waiting for us. Why don't we just leave it at that for now? Ah, that's right. As a small token of compensation for playing that little trick on you with the empty light cone, I will gift you with some words. They hold great significance to me. Life is akin to a winding labyrinth where memories serve as our sole companions. <laughs> You'll remember these words dearly, won't you? In the year 2158 of the Amber Era, the first year of the new epoch, the universe resumed its intended trajectory. The kindling of conspiracy smoldered in Panacone, the land of the dreams. Failing to erupt into a blaze, it instead flickered briefly on Klopoth's anvil, before vanishing in the blink of an eye. The dead and those fated to die remain in their eternal slumber, while the living find solace in deep sleep, 
all clamored in a cacophony of silence and then went about their own ways. The cosmos emanated a vitality characteristic of a new era, all for the modest price of a brother and sister's mild grief. Babies are born as stars extinguish. The silver rail unfolds. The story of the Astral Express comes to a close, yet it also embarks anew. Time marches forward, heralding the arrival of a new chapter in the history of trailblazing expeditions. Countless shooting stars streak the sky tonight. If you can pick the right one, it will carry your wish to thousands of distant worlds. You're feeling very relaxed now, aren't you? So, then, it's time to tell you a little bedtime story. Well, let's start with a conclusion. The crew was defeated in the battle against Sunday. Everyone in Panacone failed, and no one survived. But don't panic. The truth, as horrifying as it may be, is not yet irreversible. There's still a glimmer of hope, and that's why I'm here. Next, I'll use this empty light comb that carries all your memories to relive everything that happened before. And when this story reaches its end, I'm sure someone as clever as you will notice that. There's a major flaw in the story you have experienced. Yet, within that flaw lies a glimmer of hope. Are you ready for it? Do you remember everything? When the clock turned back, the Express started a warp jump, sending you to a strange dream. You were bewildered back then, and then a galaxy ranger named Acheron showed you a way out. When you arrived at the Reverie Hotel, you met the doorman Misha and had a confrontation with a Venturine, an IPC representative. Thankfully, Acheron appeared again and helped you. After that, you saved Firefly and explored Penacone together. During the tour, you ran into Sparkle disguised as Sampo and accidentally entered a child's dream. There, I rescued both of you from death, but Firefly didn't return to reality. She realized the truth and tried to involve you in her plan, but that resulted in an accidental death. Even more unsettling, you soon encountered another murder. The two cases of death prompted you to investigate the truth behind the sweet dream. Despite your efforts to gather information about the two victims, you didn't make much progress. But you did learn about the Watchmaker from Gallagher. Meanwhile, Aventurine was secretly carrying out his scheme, in which you were one of the pawns. 
In the midst of a fierce battle, Acheron revealed her true identity as an emanator of the Nihility, and unsheathed her sword. That strike foiled Aventurine's plan, and opened a passage between the Sweet Dream and the original Memory Zone. Upon your arrival at Dreamflux Reef, you learned the truth that death was actually dormancy. As well as the truth about the Dreamscape, the Stellaron, and the bellboy, Misha. You split up with Sunday and Robin, looking for a way to seal the Stellaron. However, it turned out that Sunday and the Dream Master had their own hidden agenda and you had to engage in an ultimate duel on the stage of the Charmony Festival. Finally, the story reached its conclusion. You emerged victorious, with the Trailblaze triumphing over the Order, and Penacone embracing a bright and peaceful future. This marks the end of the thrilling journey in Penacone. I'm sure you've already noticed something unusual, haven't you? The major flaw, which contradicts all the known information, hides in this story. It is true that Gallagher is a history fictionologist, but he didn't lie in this matter. In addition, death and dormancy do arise from the same concept, don't they? This is not the fatal variable in your adventure. Take your time and think it through. Well, although the fake deaths of those two ladies don't align with our initial assumptions, this fact itself doesn't contradict the information we have so far. I'll go ahead and eliminate that incorrect answer for you. So, what is the fatal variable? Little Misha, or should I call him the Watchmaker? He's only a segment of memory in a dream bubble, but his ambition for the Trailblaze led him to leave the bubble and embark on a grand adventure in Penacone. Well, Misha is a rather special memory zone meme, and he was granted power by the Trailblaze, there's still one thing that he shouldn't be able to do. A life born in the memory zone could never manifest in reality. So, why did he appear in the Reverie Hotel in reality? The answer is simple. He is the one fatal variable that contradicts all our known information. This means that you, who wholeheartedly believe in this memory, are still trapped in the dreamscape at this very moment. Wake up, sleepyhead. Break free from this eternal dream and return to the real world. We'll find our answers there. This way, darling. <laughs> 